that we have to move forward our, con our city, the city of Georgetown. And it is no other than a true son of the soil, a true statesman, our very own Vice President and General Secretary, Dr. the Honorable Barrett Jack Dio. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure by now you would have heard from our candidates and our Prime Minister and you are fully aware of what our plans are for the city. And so tonight, like the Prime Minister, I'm here in support of these candidates and to say to you, the residents of Georgetown, that we take every election seriously. And we believe in remaining faithful to the promises that we make, whether at the national level or at the local level. And by now, the flyer that you would have received in every home, which outlines the key areas of focus for the city that if elected, we are going to pursue. I want to say to you that we not only are in here, here tonight to support that manifesto, but we made sure as General Secretary of this party I went through every single item on that flyer before it was printed to see that it's doable and that we can lend our full support to. And you have back in the program, the plan of this group of young people, a party with a great track record of progress, achievement, and a party with an enormous credibility in fulfilling its promises. And therefore, if these elections were just about achievements and track record, then we had nothing to worry about in Georgetown. But often, the waters become murky because APNU deliberately does that to detract from their history of failure a failure at the national level and at a, a failure at the city council level so they invent a smoke screen that they blow across the city and particularly in many communities to obfuscate people's view to cloud their view and that way they can focus on the things that matter to them. The first such smoke screen in the city and in London and New Amsterdam has been race. And they've used the racial boogeyman that the People's Progressive Party is a racist party. Therefore, you must never support the PPP. Today, because people understand our true nature. You see them coming to the PPP in large numbers and they're welcome here. Because the moment, the moment people cross the floor and they come into this party and they see the true nature of the party, they can look us in the eyes, they see our heart, they will see that this party is only focused on development for all of our people across Guyana, wherever they live, whatever their race, whatever their religion, whatever their gender. That we are a party about progress. And they see that, and they see the fierce love, 
the, the enormous love that our party has for this country and for progress. They feel part of a bigger cause. And tonight, you are part of that cause to take this city away from Apno. And we have to do so, so that the city can breed and develop. And we don't have this millstone around our necks and the backs of the residents of the city. We have to blow away the smoke screen that they've cultivated to allow those people not to come to us. I came from speaking at a meeting in South Georgetown at the well site. It is the biggest meeting that we've ever had in our entire history at that site in South Georgetown. Because people are not buying the lies anymore. Today at my press conference, I had to go through in great detail the lies that they're telling once again because they're panicked. You know, what has happened is they've given up on the rest of the country, but they've been making excuses. Holder, who is the head, the chairman of the PNC said, the PPP has gerrymandered boundaries. That is why we can't win a majority of local government areas. Well, in 2018, when Bolton changed the boundaries, they still did not win a majority of local government areas in Guyana. We swept the polls then. So he's already making excuses as to why they're going to lose in a major way. This is typical APNU. One time, oh, it is a list is bad. Two, the PPP is regular elections. Now it's the boundaries have been gerrymandered. So we've seen that. We've seen because of the panic in their camp, because Georgetown has become a battleground now. In the past, Georgetown was an easy area for them. They gave up on the rest of the country because in these elections, before the elections on Monday across Guyana, we have won 291 of the 610 constituencies already. We have won 13 of the 80 local government areas. APNU can't win a majority belying what the holder said because they did not contest in 25 of the 80 local government areas in an over half of the constituencies they did not contest in. So how could they ever win a majority? It's not the gerrymandering of the boundaries. It's their weakness as a party that would lead to that result. And so they've given up on Guyana because they know on Monday we will sweep many of the remaining areas across the country. But now they're worried about traditional strongholds. They're worried about Bartica and Linden and Georgetown and New Amsterdam because people now in these areas recognize that after nearly 60 years in control of these places that APNU has nothing to offer them. Absolutely nothing and they're crossing to the PPP and so these are now the battleground um, local government areas and we are waging a fierce challenge with these candidates and you the activists of the party and the supporters and you know why because we have a message for every resident in these communities whether you're in Linden or Amsterdam or Bartica or here tonight because people are li listening to us across the country that we have come to you to say what we are going to do, how we're going to change every part of our country, including the city and these communities. APNU is still stuck in the mode of criticizing the PPP, Jadeu, Irfanali. They can't offer people anything new. 
and therefore people are seeing this so they've invented the smoke screen but what i just spoke to you about one element of the smoke smoke screen which is race dividing our people along racial lines but that doesn't have any resonance now because people are seeing through that when you're in office you didn't care for us you didn't care whether we are afro guyanese and poor and suffering but election time suddenly you're concerned about us so people have seen that and now what are the new smoke screen in the city one now the ppp will increase taxes in the city and in across across the country new amsterdam and linden well they think we have short memories it was in october 2nd it was on october 2nd that Bulkan, as minister of communities signed a 335 million dollars contract with a company from canada to increase the valuation of properties across Guyana. If the valuation had increased, now your taxes are a percentage of the value. So without even changing the percentage, your taxes would have gone up. And as they did it in New Amsterdam, where they had a pilot, the only reason that wasn't implemented is because the PPP filed a no confidence motion in 2018, a month after that contract was signed. And then in 2020, we won the elections. So today, to come to say to people that PPP will raise your taxes, we campaigned in 2018 on no new taxes because we believe APNU had already put a lot of taxes and created a lot of hardships for people. And this year again, so you can hear it from me directly, that the entire PNC leadership in the last week, because of the desperation, they're telling a lie that we intend to raise taxes. There will be no increase in rates and taxes in these local government areas. Secondly, Christopher Jones talk about if we want to sell off all the lands in the city. So two things he said there that a number of people were given amnesty under APNU for back taxes. And therefore, if we come into office, we'd allow people taxes to run up and then sell off their houses and, every, and their properties. Well, the amnesty that he spoke of a couple nights ago in Palm Park, and they repeated today at their press conference, was a scheme for corruption. Susan Rodriguez, I told her the same night to respond to him and he came back with a wishy-washy kind of explanation. Because if the, a businessman owed $50 million, they will give him amnesty. He would pay $2 million to the city council and then had to pay $2 million to them under the table and $46 million would be waived. It was a scheme for corruption. Even now, as we speak, they're going around. There's one guy, he, the deputy mayor, because he called my name, going around looking for every bit of land in the city to sell off. They're, they're worried that the change may happen. They're trying to accelerate the sale of all the little pieces that the city may own, the reserves, etc. And Nigel Darmlal had to write the turn clerk to put a hole on it. That is the nature. Now, he talks about land, Christopher Jones. He should be the last person in the world to speak about anything. They, in 2016, they, they, Mr. Ben from Lansing Survey gave him a piece of land. On that land, they were, we were supposed to build a polyclinic. When they discovered that, they moved in next door. 
and they bulldozed. He took away the land from the people who were living there for 30 years. An Afro-Guyanese family, they threw them off. So that's his track record on land issues. And he had the audacity to raise that and make it a boogeyman around election time that the PPP will give away the lands to big people. Under the PNC, the last five years, at Ogre, they gave transfer hundreds of acres of land, gave people the title, and the people have not even paid the a deposit on the land, which is illegal. If you don't believe me, just Google that and you will find the history of it. I don't want to be bogged down with that. At Wales, where they shut down the sugar factory and they sold off all the properties and the factory of scrap metal, they gave out all the lands there. One guy got 5,000 acres on which you can do 25,000 house lots. The people across there, 14,000 of them need lots. Abdu didn't care about them. They gave this one person. Now we are taking back the land so that 14,000 people who live across the river could have a plot of land. In Linden, instead of giving land to ordinary people, the Amanza Walton, the member of parliament, she got a prime piece of land, her brother got a prime piece, the sister got a prime piece, the Figueras got, the two of them got, Patterson got the minister, Jordan, the minister Jordan, his neighbor from Georgetown got the land in Linden. Lowenfield got 216 acres, but you know ordinary Lindeners couldn't get a single house lot. So when they come to lie now and talk nonsense, Christopher Jones, you know why he didn't say it at the press conference today? He went and hid in Plum Park and said that because he thought people will not be listening. And that is what they thrive on, spreading rumors in many communities that the PPP is going to throw off vendors. They're going to remove squatters. They're going to destroy the city. They're another one that we've starved the city. We have, since we got into office in 1992, we have practically fixed every single road in the city. We took it away from the city council. If we had to leave it with the city council, which is their responsibility, you would have had trenches or roads now to drive on. But they talk about starving the city. Every road has been fixed by the central government, not the city. Every single road, hundreds of billions of dollars being expended in roads. We removed the dump site from the city so that garbage collection could improve. We put in street lights in many parts of the city. I saw the mayor today saying GPL own, owes the city council $10 billion. GPL, I don't know in the APRU period if GPL used to plug something into the city council to get the, the power. And it was the other way around. They owe the GPL about $10 billion to the street light. They don't pay for it. We have had to waive all of that, pay for it from the, from the, the country. This is a not the future president Obraj, the Heil man, Heil man. They're wrong, they're gone somewhere around the world. This is a nonsense, a lies that you hear all the time. Everything that has been done positively in this city has been because of the efforts of the central government. But we can't continue in this new dispensation as we build out a modern city you're seeing the elements of it already. The road between the Sherry Street, the boulevard that we are building, and Kingston, people can recreationally use that boulevard. But along the banks of the, 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 the railway embankment, you would have 10,000 parking lots so that residents in the city 
can have parking. It will transform the area. You see the same thing between Prashad Nagar and, and Campbellville. Another road there to defuse the traffic from the East Coast coming into the city. But we didn't do it with just a four-lane road. We did it with a boulevard so people in the evening can go out with their families and have recreational um, de development. The same thing is happening at Pontrench Dam. So they told the people in Pontrench Dam that we want to transform the ghettos. So that's how we see South Georgetown ghetto. That we try, want to transform the ghetto so that rich people can buy out the lands. Already, already because of the development, one boulevard in Pontrench Dam that's being built now. Property values have gone up. People own these properties by transport. It's their choice what to, whether to sell or not. Malcolm Ferreira was just speaking at the other meeting. He said an old lady told him that already she had an offer for $60 million for her old house. And I've been saying to people, don't sell. Don't sell, it will go even higher. People who live in South Georgetown will see their properties skyrocket. Right across Guyana, you will see development. Another road at Ogle, a hospital there for women and children, several hotels there. It's the same thing going out of South Georgetown. And all the cross streets would be fixed. We have to focus on drainage in the city, greater pumping capacity, garbage, lights for every single street. Because as soon as we complete the gas to energy project next year, we'll be able to double the output of electricity, reduce electricity prices by 50% for all the people of Guyana, and then have enough electricity that every street corner you would have a lamp, a, a lantern, um, the, a light. That's what we're about. Leaving out cooking gas. I didn't tell you, we'd start exporting cooking gas. So the cost of living will come down. That too will be decreased by 50%. So, I, I can go on tonight talking about national plans for transformation. We have credibility because we made promises in 2020. We fought for freedom. If you contrast the track record, you split the screen and show APNU on one side and PBP, a party that has consistently tried to take away freedom from people through rigged elections. On the other side, a party that has always fought for freedom and democracy. A party, if you split the screen, took away the children grant, restored it took away the pensioners water, we restored it. Put, put taxes on the miners, three new taxes, we removed them. Put taxes on agriculture, pesticides, fertilizer, etc. increase their rent charges, we restored it. Took away the, the John services bonus, we restored it. A thousand scholarships in five years, already 14,000 scholarships. 4,000 house lots in five years, already 30,000 in three years. That's the difference between their promises and our promises. And so, who has the credibility, the track record to deliver? It is only one party, the People's Progressive Party. And as General Secretary, I'm proud of the history of this party. I'm proud of its history. It has grown over the years into a force, a movement, and it has people of every race, and we are broadening our base in every single corner of this country. If we have, we continue at this pace, 2025, will be a foregone conclusion when we get to the national elections. And we must work towards that. Work towards that not by how we look or how, how, how we can dress up. Um, the, the candidate for one area went into Plum Park and campaigned alone from the back of his vehicle. 
and call us trench crapples. PPP we are trench crapples. Well, there they fancy crapples. They're the fancy crapples. But this is not a contest between crapples. They are a contest of ideas and programs to help people and develop our communities. If it was a crapo contest, we'd let Norton judge that, because he's the chief crapo. You know, he's hoping to be commander-in-chief. He could be chief crapo commander. That is what they are. A hopeless man running down people all the time. I don't see the NGOs now. They talk about credibility of their candidates today. And the PVP don't have credible candidates. And they have on their list two persons. One was charged for raping a man. And the other one in Bartica. And the other one was charged for molesting children. Even children. And they talk about credibility of candidates. They talk Norton has a problem with women. He, he got rid of three general secretaries. He got two of them and harassed the third one. Amna Ali, Gita Chandan, then the other one is Don Hastings. He then said the, the Barbara Pilgrim, who had an APNU member all the years, Barbara Pilgrim was a member of parliament, came to the PPP because she saw our heart. She understood what, what we are about. That we are not about race or division or religion. We are about progress. And he called her an our behavior prostitute. And now he is saying disparaging things about the first lady. And none of them would say a word. You let a PPP person only says something like that. Some of these media houses and all these so-called NGOs, the GHRA, who are hostile to the people, they will jump on it. But you know what? We're resilient, we're strong, we can defend our people. And so we need, need, need some of these fancy crap hosts to defend us. And I want you to know that as part of this PPP family, once you are with us, we are loyal to our people too. We make the country progress. We work for the country to progress. And we want to work for our supporters to progress. First, they said that afro Guyanese were not getting contracts. When they saw one afro Guyanese get a contract, they say, but he's PPP. So you can't be, you can only be afro Guyanese and PNC, and then it's okay. As though PDP people can't get benefits and contracts, etc. They're part of Guyana. They all have to enjoy the benefits of the work that we put in this country. Everybody should, including PDP people. So I have no, I have no apology to make for these people when they say that. Today they're moralizing about when we should pay the cash grant. And look at the shamelessness. Again, the audacity. They took away, stole from the children $8 billion over the five years, $1.6 billion a year. And now they're telling us when we must pay out the cash grant. That's what they want. You shouldn't pay it now, you should pay it next month, you should pay it this month. Just shut up. You didn't took a, took the thing away from the children. You don't have a right to talk anymore. You don't have a right to talk anymore. This is the kind of thing we hear from them. And so, we're, when we believe we're in the right, we feel so defended. And we know that our plans are laid out to change this country. They talk about hail money, hail money like the mayor. Hail money, right? I can't even pronounce it in Hail. Hail. Hail money. So, the thing is, the hospitals alone, the 12 new hospitals that we've started, we came into government. We had no plans to change any sector. The health sector was falling apart. 
the COVID hospital that they built corruptly. Because up to now, we're in dispute over the payment for that hospital. Nothing was there. No bed, no ICU unit, no oxygen, nothing. We tested, we're testing 40 persons per day. Within a matter of three months, we moved to testing people, 5,000 people per day, equipped the hospital, kept our people safe in the period. When we had the cost of living increase because of COVID, everything was shut down. We tried to assist people on that too. And we still fulfill our promises, although a year and a half, we had to deal with COVID in the two and a half, three years we've been in office. It took sap our energy a bit, but we dealt with it and we rose to the challenge, fulfill our promises, and we laid out all the plans for changing Guyana. We, the highway to the airport, we not only laid out the plans, did the feasibility study, raised the financing, but it's already being implemented. We put in place a new plan to bridge the river. We awarded a contract that is being built now. The 12 hospitals, we put in place a plan to do them. All will start this year. 12 new hospitals around the country. That will, that will collectively give us over 30 new operating theaters. Everyone will have a CT scan in them so that it will transform healthcare. We, we put together the gas to energy project. All of them against it. You know, the NGOs, or we cause it climate change, these clowns. <laughs> huh? our, our emission, our emission is not 10 minutes of global emission. That's total emission of greenhouse gases in this country. Not 10 minutes of global emission, but we're the ones causing climate change. A lot of them sit abroad, broad, and they pontificate or oh, shut down the oil and gas industry. When you check where they live in Canada, Canada's got the tar sands that are the most polluting to the world. The United States is one of the largest producers of fossil fuels. But they're not worried about that. The U.S. has maybe 16% of global emissions. Nobody listens to them over there, but they're trying to block the industry here. We fight them off because we recognize we have to hold these, these, these foreign companies to come. That's why we passed a local content law that APNU refused to do. And we drove 400 million US dollars of business to 1,500 Guyanese companies in the first year. Thousands of our people are employed. We prohibited the oil and gas companies from uh, uh, recruiting people or procuring goods and services in a whole range of areas so we can drive business to our people. We embark upon a training program to prepare you for the future. And so with new management, a new economy, we need a new city council too. You can't have these fossils running the place. And they have no vision whatsoever. Their only talk is about, if you look at the press conference, it says it's pathetic. Imagine, I would be ashamed to sit down there and listen to my, the own nonsense that they say. Any self-respecting person would not even want to be part of that, but they still sell that. And then we have the most ignorant man, Mr. Tiktok Lal. You know Tiktok Lal, Glenn Lal. I am, a, as I said today, I am a, an economist, a macroeconomics economist. And I'm still careful about what I say in economics because there are many branches of economics. He, I don't know what he does, but he's a specialist in everything. Everything. But it's a lie. We saw this before. We saw AFC started, oh, we're not part of any party. And then they link up with APNU. And so too Glenn Lal, he tries on people's mindset lying to them every single day with the ultimate objective of creating a party. And the man who is one of his chief organizers in the Escobar Coast is now APNU candidate.
So it's the nexus is there. We can't bother with them. And then we're going to have all sorts of these things in the future. But tonight is not the night to talk about that. Tonight is a night when I ask you, because everything is in your hands. As I said before, this is the new battleground. It's a battle for the future. The future of our city, the future of our community, the future of our children, our own futures. That's the battle we're waging and we're coming, we're culminating. Now in the end, we're coming to the end. Monday, the results of that battle will be known. But you are the soldiers. Each of you can make a difference in this battle. And that's why I expect all of you to give maximum effort in wherever you live in the city. Maximum effort over the next three days to ensure that people are ready to come out. We take nothing for granted, absolutely nothing. A lot of our people are complacent. They believe that because we are in power, local government elections don't matter. They do matter, as you have heard. They do matter. And you, wherever you live, I want you to walk the ground, help with the organization, bring people out, get your vehicles, whatever, encourage your friends. That's the way you win elections. And so tonight I thank you to, for coming here to support our candidates. We are grateful for this, but you are fighting for yourselves and your city. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There we have it.